Okay, here we go. Ah, again, December 28th, 2020. Ah, nice to see everybody. Next time we're together, it will be 2021. So this is kind of a very poignant class. Let's do a little bit of detox. Maybe some of us ate or drank too much from the holidays, I don't know. Um, but let's return to center and balance ourselves for the rest of the week. Hands together, feet together. Let your thumbs come in and touch sternum, prayer posture. And begin the cleansing breath. In through the nose, hot, audible exhale through the mouth. Make sure you hear your own breath. Relax the hands. Nice and slow. Everything we do, nice and slow. Hold this Wu Chi posture with the feet together. There's a feet together and feet open Wu Chi posture. Explore them both. Feel heart center. Put your awareness right here into heart. Just right here. Put your mind. Continue to do the breath. Turn the hands over, palms up. So all I do is just turn the palms over like this and just receive. Feel this area opening, softening. If you didn't feel it, just turn the palms back over and look for it. Oh, just, just look. Softening, opening, like an elevator door opening here. Turn your palms over, turn them back. Ah, there it is. See, the second time I felt it a little bit more, and that's okay to do it a couple of times till you feel it. Once you feel it, then hold that open posture. And right here, I want you to feel like a wildflower, a sunflower, actually. And you're the sunflower. Your spine is the stem of the sunflower. And you're just reaching towards the sun, reaching towards the sky. You've got the sky hook pulling up on your spine, lengthening your spine. You have your sacrum anchoring down into earth, anchoring the bottom body. Feel your feet bottoms anchoring into earth. Feel them grounding. Feel your palms receiving the energy from the sun or even just the light from outside. Put your awareness in your palms and the feet bottoms. Just receive. Then relax the hands. You can hold that posture as long as you want if you're doing it on your own. Relax the hands back to Uji. Bend both knees. Step out with a flat, empty foot. My left, always step in and out with the left. Put it straight out and then sink into that left leg. Fill it up. Now I'm going into yin and yang. Uji, I'm an undifferentiated energy. Uji, I'm neither yin nor yang. But once I step out into this posture, now I'm yin and yang. Now I'm flowing back and forth, just letting my body unravel. And then at some point I feel, okay, I'm unraveled. And I just catch the momentum and I push. I push on the chi. This is one of the hands flowing through water. There's two. One is the hands are flowing through water on each side of you. And the other one, which we'll do in a bit, is the hands flowing through water in front of you. Two versions of this one. I love them both. Do this part, just keep breathing, keep doing the cleansing breath. Because you'll want to hold that breathing, not through the qigongs per se, but you'll want to hold that cleansing breath through the tapping and the bouncing where we're detoxifying the body and opening up the lymph nodes and moving stagnant or blocked energy with a tapping and block and bouncing. And let the hands just settle in. And cup the hand, use your lao gong, your palm, down the inside, up the outside. Let's open up any stagnant or blocked energy. Don't forget shoulder blade. Use your other hand if you can't reach it. 
armpit. If you fall behind in this section, don't worry. I always hold at the end before I bounce. Just take your time. If you've got a spot that needs extra attention, I encourage you to stay on it. Don't leave it. Stay on it. Maybe make little circles. The lymph nodes will open. Just needs a little extra attention. Other arm. Other armpit. And I get all under here. Let's get these lymph nodes underneath the collarbone, which are lung points. These are all lung, especially here where this, this meets right up in here is a lung point. You'll find it's a little bit, tends to be a little sore in there. Nothing wrong, that's just the way it is. If you feel a spot that feels a little funky or wonky, stay on it, make little circles. Get the other side, back and forth, circles on any spots. Ooh. This one's a little, you'll find one side may be a bit more sore than the other. I do. If you're in a rush and you're running, you're doing the tapping, this is a little double. Just a little option. If you're in a rush and you, but you still want to do it. Ah. Continue cleansing breath, thymus thump, boost the immune system. Stroke down vagus nerve. Good. Now let's get the ribs, both sides. Drum the ribs, activate the organs underneath. They feel that vibration all the way. Armpit down to waist. Other side, you're taking a shower. If your shoulder bothers you, it's okay. Just keep the arm out like this. Doesn't have to be up, up high. Dantian, snap the fingers, snap. Gentle fists, drum, kidneys, adrenals. I didn't always drum them as hard as I am now. I kind of worked up to this. Rub, rub, rub. Don't drum them, don't drum them to, there should be no pain at all. So don't overdo it. And legs. Remember, you can put your leg, there's a variation. I like to give variation. You could put it up, us. it's just a TV stand. I could put it up on a chair, the seat of a chair. I can bend over. If I wanna practice balance one day, I'm feeling good. I can do it in the air. Many variations of this. If my knees are bothering me, I give a little rub, extra rub on the knees with the tapping. You know, it's snowing here today, so people's knees with the extra humidity may be bothering them. If that's the case, Rub, tap, rub, tap. That's bringing see the quads in the front. That's bringing circulation and blood supply to the knees. Back to Uchi. Oh, so right now, if you don't feel it already, you should feel some warmth in your core that's extending out to your limbs. At the very least from tapping, you should feel a level of warmth. Usually in my classes, I see people unzippering their jackets after we just do the tapping. That's all, we, we didn't even start the Qigong yet. But so that shows me right there that the circulation has increased just from the tapping. If you see people unzipping their jackets, you know that's what's going on. We did Qigong the other day, it was in the park, it was, uh, I don't know, 30 some odd degrees. And we did a, some of these dynamic Qigongs with the tapping and bouncing and everyone was warming up. So let's do a little bounce. Remember, inhale, exhale through the nose, fire breath. Re really heat up the body here. You can coordinate the breath with the up and down. I, I inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, quick. Tap the heels a couple times. Send the energy up the body. Muscles loose, fruit on a tree. Let it go, all the tension go. Ah, back to Uchi, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, hot audible. That's the cleansing breath, that's letting go of anything you may have been holding. So we tap, 
right? We let go, we, we open up stagnant energy, blocked energy, then we shake it off and we get rid of any other stagnant energy that may be on our bodies, just letting it go. And one more, bounce and shake. Tap the heels a couple times, just a few. Back to Uchi. Right into whole body breathing. You all know these. Some of the ones, some of these I do every time because, well, the whole body breathing is what we do to connect mind with body. We use the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Make sure you're doing it right in front of lower Dantian. Make sure the whole body's moving. Inhale. Exhale. Just like with all our other Qigongs, notice my pelvis is involved. I'm folding at the qua or groin. So I'm pumping my lymphatic system here as I'm breathing. So here my qua is opening, inhale. My qua is closing, exhale. My pinkies are folding into my qua. Inhale, open the qua or groin area. Close the groin. Again, doing that with my pelvis, moving it forward and backwards in space. My knees also bending and straightening. Focus right now on, oh, look at my hands. Let your hands get soft, fluid. Fingers, wrists, all of it, super soft. Like you're just flowing in water. Coordinate it with your breath, sync up, and keep your palms connected. Don't, get, don't let this thing get so big that there's just like, my palms are right way out here, even though they're facing each other. I've just lost connection with them. Don't let it get that big. Keep it right here, somewhere around here. Doesn't have to be exact, just not this big, you know? Just, you'll, you'll know it too. There'll be a point where your palms just lose connection with each other. That's the point where it's too much. So you keep it right in here and then just go slower. Sync up to the rhythm of your own breath. That's the goal right here. So we'll all be doing this a little differently. You're syncing up to your own breath, your own respiratory rate, not mine, not anyone else in class. Just sync up with yours, exhale. Inhale, exhale. You may feel this down in your feet bottoms. Now go right into from whole body breathing right here on the exhale. I want you to open into spinal cord breathing. Head up, look up. Ah, should feel good. Leaning back and then exhale, round the back, sink the chest, tuck the pelvis. On the exhale, notice I have a, this is called the C curve, right here, the C curve. Inhale, look up, chest up. I'm looking at the ceiling. Exhale. Inhale, look up, chest up. Exhale, round the back, sink the chest, tuck the pelvis. This is a good one to do in the mirror. So I, I cheat, I check myself. I'm looking at my computer right now on the Zoom and I check myself to make sure I have that, that, that C curve. But this is hard to do. You may think you're bending your back, your spine. You may think you're curving it like a turtle, but it may not, it may be flat. So what I would encourage you to do either during class or on your own after class, double check yourself. Go sideways in the mirror like this and make sure uh, that you really have it. And then you can make adjustments. So right here, notice my back is straight. And then if I look, so I see it's, I see it's straight. So, oh, oh, there it is. There's the curve. Right? It was just a minor adjustment, but you may not feel it. You just may not be aware. This also can be done more dynamically, not by bending over this way and causing strain on lower back, no, but more of a squat making it more dynamic, more of a squat when you're ready. But don't lose the curve in the back. The curve in the back and the spine is more important. 
Now, I just say this for people who want more challenge. When you're facing the mirror, you should still be able to see the mirror and see your forehead. If you see the top of your head, you've gone too far over and you've initiated your lower back. You don't want to do that. No strain on the lower back. Not for this, not for anything. One more, inhale, exhale, right into pigeon toe the feet if you'd like to, or keep them parallel, shoulders width, right into gazing at the moon. You all know this one, pump in the middle, close. Open, gaze at the moon the other side. Ah, oh. boy, is this beautiful out right now. We have snow, flurries, and the sun is out. How wonderful. So you see the sun? It just came in right here on the floor. How perfect. I'm going to call this one gazing at the sun today since we just got this beautiful sun. Don't over rotate. Go at your capacity. Always 70%. The rotation will increase with time. You don't have to force this rotation at all. I just want a healthy twisting of the center axis of the spine. That's all we're doing, twisting on the center axis, keeping the spine healthy. You may find that you adjust. Come to the middle, push the hands down. A little bit of washboard. Inhale, hands up, right around the neck region, collarbone, right around here. We turn the hands over and push the energy down. Inhale, exhale. Different from the sixth of the spinal qigongs. This is different. This is just called washboard. Sync up with the breath, inhale. Exhale, push the energy straight down the body. Inhale. Exhale. One more. As the hands come down, palms towards each other, and a little bit of Tai Chi ruler. If you're stressed, I noticed around the holidays, you know, some stress going on and what's going on in the world. Tai Chi ruler is just a wonderful movement. You could also call it spinning the orbit. We are working in the microcosmic orbit of the body, under perineum, up the spine, overhead, down the front. And imagine there's a clock in front of me. 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock. 3 o'clock, depending on how you're looking at the clock, but you get the idea. And then add, add the folding of the qua or the qua squats. Exhale. Open the qua. Close the qua. Show you from the side. This movement, just let yourself flow into it. You can't, you can't mess this one up. You want to keep the left and right palms in your channel, in your left and right channels, so they're about 12 inches apart, give or take. Don't need to measure 10, 11, 12 inches. Feel for it. You're just making a circle like a clock. And let yourself just sink into it. I'm going to be quiet in a second, and we're just going to do this in a very relaxed way. Feel your feet bottoms. Feel your body rocking forward and backwards. See my, see my body starting to rock as I get into this. I'm rocking forward and backwards to the, from the balls of the feet to the heel. I'm not trying it, just let it happen. You don't have to work it, you don't have to try. If it doesn't show up this time, it'll show up another time. My pelvis is rocking backwards and forwards. My pelvis goes back as I come down. My pelvis goes forward as I come up. Catch the momentum. You'll know when you have it. The rocking just happens naturally. And if you just allow this to be, just allow it to be for a moment. I'll be quiet. 
We'll do about 10 or so, just quietly. Reset your central nervous system. You go into a state of parasympathetic doing this one. Something very relaxing about it. Don't worry about the breath right now. Let the breath be natural and just let the body move. Feel how you're rocking on the feet bottoms. Just make a circle, keep the palms connected. Drop in, drop into the body. Welcome, get out of the head. Good, let the hands settle. Wherever you are, just let it finish its circle. We never stop anything. So if you're over here, just, oh, okay, let me finish the circle. Whenever I say let your hands settle, finish whatever motion you were in and let the hands just come back to this settled Wu Chi posture. And from that Wu Chi, right into hands flowing through water. If you wanna make this a little bit more challenging, watch how I just took a two steps out try to make this smooth flowy i'll show you from the side in a moment how lower i want i can do this in a high horse stance good no problem middle or low all good work at your level nobody's judging anybody Here's from the side. Notice my hands come around the corner, come around the corner, and they follow my weight shift. My weight shift is a, a half a second or so ahead of my hands. I shift my weight, and then my hands come around the, right here, shift my weight, hands come around the corner. They follow. It's a silk reeling. Again, you can make this as difficult or as easy as you want. Fingers pointing towards earth. That's an important point here. Fingers towards earth, pushing. Feel the chi pushing against your hands. Every way I go, it feels like this river of water in front of me. This is hands flowing through water, right? So it's the water pushing against my hands. I'm using water as a metaphor, I really mean chi.
Everyone come to this side slowly, slowly. Mirror me, so you'll all be the opposite of me. Mirror in this direction. Outer hand, so if I'm going this way, the outer hand would be on top. Cloud hands, here we go. Switch the hands. We're doing cloud hands, but I'm doing it in horse stance. Right out of Young style. Just making it into its own little repetitive Qigong. If horse stance is too challenging, when you switch, switch to one side, notice my right leg's weighted, I bring the foot in. I can come back to regular Wu Chi stance, feet shoulders width, parallel to each other, and I can do it right here. Notice when my hands pass, this hand pass, passes the wristwatch. Imagine I've got a watch on this hand now, passes the wristwatch. Notice what's happening here. I shift, the, the weight shift is what moves the hands. The weight shift moves the hands. Shift the weight, move the hands. Turn the waist, fold at the quad. Shift weight, turn hands. Turn, shift weight, move hands. Turn waist, fold at the quad. Folding at this quad now. Shift weight, move hands. Turn waist, fold at quad. Shift weight, move hands. Turn waist, fold at the quad. I'm also giving you my shoulder here. Notice that, giving you my shoulder. Both hands alive, filled with energy. Again, I can do it like that. Or at some point, when I'm all the way to one side, I can step out again. Oh, now I wanna do it wider. I wanna do it in horse stance. Make it a little bit more dynamic. Keep the hands alive. I'm doing it the same way. I'm just taking another stance. All good, either way. Next time we all come to the side, everybody this way, outer hand on top, and inside parry. Inside parry. I'm blocking a strike right onto my center line, block. I'm also blocking a groin kick. The bottom hand blocks a groin kick. Top hand is blocking a strike to my center line. So cloud hands is outside parry, meaning an outside block. This is inside parry, an inside block. Again, I can make this challenging and dynamic by coming into a horse stance, or I can come up into a horse stance, a regular stance, sorry, shoulders width stance. All good. Still pumping the quad side to side. Each side I go to, I'm pumping and folding the quad. So I'm pumping my lymphatic system manually with my movements. So now I'm in a shoulders width stance. I want to, huh, I want to make it a little harder. Step out. And the place to step out is when you're all the way at one side. When you've got an empty leg, that's an opportunity to stretch out. I'll move back to my yet mat here. My carpet's a little slippery. It's better on the mat. Just drop in. I also want to point out one thing with this. This is in the elbows. This is really in the elbows. I'm not, it's not this, it's not a shoulder movement. Just to point that out, it's the elbow, elbow. If I were to just do it without the weight shift, it would be this, block, block, block. See my shoulders? They're pretty calm. My shoulders are relaxed. So just to get that movement, then add the weight shift and the waist turn. Right? So same thing. This is it without movement, no body. Here it is with weight shift, waist turn. 
folding at the claw. It's in the elbows. This one's very easy to mistake in it for uh, shoulder movement, but my shoulders are pretty quiet. Nothing really going on with my shoulders. But now if I add the weight shift and waist turn, look what I've got, all this power, right? That I don't have right here. Not a lot of power here. Add the weight shift. Now I've got power. Keep the bottom hand alive. It's blocking too. Blocking a groin kick. I just tell you the martial applications for same reason Bill does. When you know what the martial application is, you understand why you're doing it and why you should keep the hands alive, filled with chi. Do this just a couple more times, just to get that feeling locked. Wow block, 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 all in the elbows. And then just let the hand settle. Come into high horse or shoulders with. Take a little sip of tea or water, please. We're at the halfway point. Mm. Lovely. Ah, back to Wu Chi. Whenever you're done, come back to Wu Chi. Take your time. Sometimes I do in the middle of the class, just to just to be clear with the breathing. During the class, I'm breathing in and out through the nose. Tip of my tip of my tongue is on the roof of mouth behind front teeth. Every so often you may see me come to Wu Chi like this and I do the cleansing breath. It's really just me releasing some energy that I feel like may have moved, some stagnant energy that I moved and, and like debris, almost like debris that I'm just blowing off my body. And, and it kind of came up from some of the movements that we were doing. And so I just, I'm just letting it go. And remember these palms, Energy can go in and out, both, like nostrils. So when you're doing that cleansing breath, also try to imagine that it's exhaling through the palms. Inhale, through the palms, exhale through the palms. You can even show that, inhale, like nostrils, exhale. Benbo shoot arrow qigong. Feel the nostrils, inhale. Notice my hands come in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Show you this way, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. It's very relaxing too. Inhale, exhale. Out to the sides, inhale, exhale, out to the sides. Notice how I change that. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Still bend bow, shoot arrow, qigong, inhale. Use your palms, feel your palms sucking in, inhaling. Feel your palms pushing out, stretching like a rubber band. One more variation on this. Let's go right into the tendon stretching. We've done this once or twice. So inhale, bend knees, bend elbows. Now we're gonna go out and stretch the tendons and the fascia in our body, but the palms are going to, the palms and wrists are going to stay straight on this one. Different than bend bow, bend bow, we bend at the wrist. This is straight out. So here we go. And we also go up on our tippy toes. Bend elbows and knees, inhale, 
Keep the wrists straight. Exhale, come up on your tippy toes, right on the balls of the feet. And inhale. Exhale, stretch the body like a rubber band. Uh, and inhale. Exhale, stretch the body like a rubber band. The kind of stretch you would do if you were yawning. That kind of stretch. Uh, it's like you're yawning in the morning, stretching to get out of bed. That's the amount of tension. That's it. No more. If you can't coordinate the breath, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Most importantly is working on allowing your body to be like a rubber band. Good. Bring the hands in. Push them down into earth. Back to Wu Chi. Shift all the weight right. Step out with the left leg. Bring the hands in. Step out with the right leg. Notice how I get into that stance. I start out shoulders width. I shift the weight right. I step out with the left foot, toes out to the corner. This is how I get into a horse stance. I brought my fists into my hips. Now I shift left. I point my right toes to this corner and I widen my stance. And I may do that a couple of times to get into a comfortable horse stance. So I'm just shifting my weight and standing out, pointing my toes out to the corners, double checking that my knees are over my toes. Checking, always checking in with the alignment. Elbows back, chest out a little bit. Notice my elbows, they're not flared, they're back. My hands are in, soft fists. Right at hip bones, find your hip bones. Put them right there. You all know this one, we can do it nice and slow. I want you to do one hand at a time. Go out. Punch right into the solar plexus of somebody your height. So I'm not up here. Look how low I am, solar plexus, right around here. No strain on the shoulders. Open the hand, grab. One finger at a time, starting with the pinky, next finger, next finger, end with the thumb, and then pull it in. We do one at a time instead of pull push. Other hand comes out. Notice this corkscrew. Open, grab. But you're grabbing somebody's shirt, just like this. Open the fingers, point the fingers down, one finger at a time, pull in. Push, corkscrew out, open, grab, one finger at a time, pull it in. Nice, really focus if you want. One of the things they do with the Shaolin Temple, I notice they look at the hand, they look at it. Watch it, corkscrew out, watch it. Put your intent on it. Remember, the mind needs a job to do. So if I give it this job to watch, now I'm watching this hand, corkscrew out, open. The, the mind needs a job to do or it gets lost in thought. Most of the thoughts are not fun, <laughs> usually agitating. They usually repeat thoughts, usually a loop, something we've thought of before. We have up to 70,000 thoughts a day. Oh, it's just the thought, this, that alone makes me not want to think. And so here, if we give the mind a job to do, and you can do this in high horse stance, by the way. I'm just doing a little lower to make it more challenging. If I give the mind a job to do, my, it's focusing on this fist. It's watching my fist. It's watching this hand open, watching it grab, watching each finger come in, and then the other one. Couple more. Now it's got a job to do. One more this side. Focused on that. Not focused on more thoughts. Bring it in. Good, walk the feet in, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, until you're back to a safe way to get in, especially if your floor is slippery. Back to parallel, back to Wu Chi, 
Good. Just settle in. Let the body move a little bit. Right into the first of the spinal qigong. Remember, the wrist never comes higher. I've got a string on each wrist. Wrist never comes higher than the top of my shoulder. As I come down, it's elbow, wrist, fingers. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Never higher than shoulders. Exhale, elbow, wrist, fingers. Let the pelvis move. Pelvis rocks forward and backwards, pumping at the quad, manually pumping the groin, working the lymphatic system. Inhale, exhale. Through the nose, tip of tongue on roof of mouth behind front teeth, creating that energetic circuit. Drop in, focus on the breath and the movement. Give the mind a job to do. Don't go off in thought, drop into your body. That's where peace resides, right in the body. We have it, we carry it around with us all the time. Just need to give ourselves the tools to drop into it to drop into that place of peace and harmony and balance. It's right here, right down in Dantian. Chen Menching said, put mind in Dantian. He says it over and over in his videos, put mind in Dantian. When the mind is in Dantian and the breath is in Dantian, we're not in thought. We're not in the past, we're not in the future. We're here, presence and stillness. If your shoulders are at all tired, we have raised, we've been raising our hands quite a bit. Just don't go up as high. That's okay. Watch. Inhale. Exhale. Boy, I'm barely using my shoulders there. I'll show you from the front. Inhale. Keep the elbows down. When the elbows are down, just a little tip, a little pro tip. When the elbows are down, the shoulders are really not engaged. It's when I lift all this stuff, the elbows are up, then the shoulders are starting to engage, or when I come too high. But if I keep the elbows down, then my shoulders are very quiet. Good, relax the hands. Just finish up. I wait for you. Back to Wu Chi. I might just hold this posture for a moment. Feel your feet bottoms grounding into earth. Feel your palms, your lao gongs grounding into earth. Feel a sky hook on the top of your head in Ba Wei or crown chakra and feel that elongating your spine, just pulling you up. So you've got a counter pull going. A sky hook up here, elongating, stretching the spine 
too bad. I just got, when I pull the chin in, so the sky hook elongates my spine, but it also pulls my head up. It's because the bawe is towards the back of the head, straight up from the tip of the ears. If you were to take your thumbs and put them on the tips of your ears, and then you just go straight up to the top of the head, you'll notice it's a bit towards the back. So what does that do? Sky hook. I just pull in my hair a little bit back there and it pulls my chin in and my head top goes up. I think I gain about a half inch or so on height. And so my spine is elongated, yet my sacrum is anchoring straight down into earth like a boat anchor. So I have this counter pulling going on in this Wu Chi posture. And boy, have I come to appreciate this Wu Chi. This is its own practice. This is wholeness, one. It's a circle, neither yin nor yang when we come back to this posture. And notice in Tai Chi and Qigong, we always come back to holding this posture before and after. So feel free to hold this posture as long as you want when you're doing your own practice, or this can be your practice. Now from here, let's just do a little bit of Mobility work, hands together. We'll do all three levels of this mobility training. This really helps us keep the joints lubed, oiled, loose. Notice where I'm touching, right at the wrists, around and around. I let my elbows go out, so I make room for it to come through. Fingers point towards me right here. Then they point up, away, down. I've been doing this one for a while, but it's super important. I do this almost every day. And reverse it. Here's a great point to reverse. When the palms are up, like I'm serving tea, I reverse it. Now everything towards me, palm, uh, fingers towards me. Again, keeping the same connection point. Good. Got to make room for them to come in. Elbows have to come out so the fingers can point towards you. Now break them apart, figure eight. Here we go. Lead with the pinkies. Pinkies are leading here. Pinky. I'm putting, put, putting my pinky out just to show you. Pinky makes an inner circle. Inner Two inner loops, two outer loops. They're each making their own individual infinity sign or figure eight, sideways figure eight. Pinkies leading. That's one way. Add the fingers. Beak open. I don't know if anyone heard that, but I just got a big crack in my wrist. Big adjustment. It felt great. No shoulders. Shoulders are quiet. Don't make this big. It's not this, this big thing like this. It's not. My shoulders are completely relaxed. If your shoulders are engaged, you're doing too much. Now, right here, switch. Lead with the thumbs, inner circle with the thumbs, outer circle with the thumbs, lead with the thumbs. Then when you're ready, add the fingers. Lead with the thumbs, inner, outer. That's one way to remember this, how to do this one is you're gonna lead with the pinkies, then you'll lead with the thumbs. Then add the fingers once you have the motion, then you add the fingers last. Good, okay. Right into wrist circles. One way, nice and relaxed, shoulders quiet, inwards. Now inwards, reverse them. Elbow circles, away, away from you. I just do each one about five to seven times. Don't even count really. Reverse it towards you, towards you. Good. Excellent. Relax the arms. We've done this so many times. Tap your tap your shoulder blades. Wake them up. You've got an energy gate right in the center of your shoulder blade. Walk them. Walk one. Remember, arms are out like this. Here are the arms, okay? Walk one. Remember, making a circle, forward, circle. 
circle. I'm not pulling my arm back. My arm is only going back because my shoulder blade is coming in the back part of the circle. I'm not pulling it back. I'm just letting my arms float along with the circular movement of the shoulder blade. I'm also now releasing my hips and ribs just to come along for the ride. I'm not engaging them intentionally, but I'm allowing and releasing hips and ribs to come along for this ride. So this becomes Watch, more dynamic. This starts out right here. This is it. Then watch. Oh, wow, I can make this more dynamic. Then I could put my arms out to the sides a little bit. Look how dynamic this gets. Beautiful. Reverse it. Reverse it. Remember, we're moving the shoulder blades and the ribs, lungs. We're, we're affecting lungs and heart, massaging lungs and heart. Backwards. Show you from the side, backwards, backwards. Circles, still circles. Everything circles in this mobility work that we're doing. All circles, circles and figure eights. Good, let it go. Good, ribs, hands here. I'm gonna work the ribs. Ribs back, ribs forward. Ribs back, ribs forward. Notice I say ribs and we are working the ribs. However, the spine is getting some work too. Ribs back, ribs forward. Ribs to the side, ribs to this side. Side, 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 side. Holding my hips steady, hip steady, pushing. Another way to do it, side, 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 side. Really just teaching the body, opening up. We want to feel the space between the ribs. Then put your hands on the ribs and try to connect the dots. We did forward, backwards, side, side. I want you to connect the dots now into a 360. Forward, side, back, side, forward, side, back, side, forward. Ah, oh, should feel good. Show you from the sides. Let the body move. It knows what it needs to do. Reverse it. This one's wonderful to do in the chair. You could see it would be nice to do this in the chair. You're at a computer, do this. For, do forward, backward, side, side, and then try to make a 360 as your hips are locked into a chair. Wonderful thing to do when you're sitting at a desk, maybe on the computer, working too long. Okay, shake it out, <sighs> shake that out. Figure eights with the hips, hip forward. I'm just gonna you keep your hands here or here, either one, here, here, wherever's comfortable for you. I do them both. I'm gonna point, hips, hip, hip forward, back. Other hip forward, back, hip forward. Adjust the feet, make sure your stance isn't too wide. If your stance is too wide, you won't get as much movement in the hips forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Reverse it right here, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. Good. Really keep it moving. Good, last one, bring it forward, back to neutral and hip circles, but notice I'm moving with my hips. So this is not this. Look how my hips are steady and I'm moving with my head. That is another type of stretch, but that's not the one we're doing. We're doing hip circles. Booty forward, booty to the side. My booty comes back here. So my head is the opposite of where, where I am, where my hips are. My head goes the opposite. See, my hips are here, so my, now my head is over here. Head's back, head's to the other side, head forward. But my head is just following, just going along for the ride. I'm not doing anything. I'm running the whole show from the hips. This should feel really good on your lower back. Please go slow because the stretching of these areas and the adjustment that may happen in your spine or your lower back or sacrum may adjust. 
but it's not going to happen if you do it fast. It's not the hula hoop days. I had a hula hoop, so I should know. Reverse it. And I loved my hula hoop, but that's a whole different thing. And that's about speed and momentum. This is about stretching and mobility, taking care of our hips. Oh. should feel really good the slower you go. You're just passing by maybe some spots that are a little bit tender or overworked. Come up. And last one, let's lift the leg. You can hold onto a, a chair or a wall, or you can just try to balance it. Are the hands out? I'm just relaxing my hands and I'm doing ankle circles. Five to seven one way. Five to seven, another way. Good. Then take that foot, that same foot you just did the, the ankle circles with, cross it in front of your other foot and just relax it. Toes, my toes are tucked under and I feel a stretch on the top of my foot. Just relaxing, letting the weight of my foot stretch the top of my foot. So see, it's right out, it's in front, in front. Show you this way. Right here, just crossed over. Other foot. You may find circles are harder or easier, one side versus another. Five to seven one way, then reverse it. Cross it over, notice, just cross it over. Toes tucked under, feel the stretching on the top of the leg. Good, come out of that, shake it out. Let the one leg just lean a little bit. And this is just releasing the hip. I'm just catching the momentum here and I'm just letting the weight of my leg just elongate and create some space in that hip bone that we're always just compressing and compressing all day every time we walk. You can hold on again. I've just been doing it a lot, so I'm not holding on, but I, I used to and sometimes I do. Other side. Other side, other leg. Doesn't matter which leg you do first. Just allow the weight of your leg to pull and create space in the hip there. And I'm sort of moving my body to help the momentum of the leg. Good. Hands cross chest. Cross the chest to remove the shoulders. Now we're going to counteract the texting and reading that we all have because we're looking down whether it's just a book or texting or computer, whatever, we look down a lot. So here we go to counter that, counterbalance it. Shoulders up, look up, ah. Drop the shoulders, look forward. Shoulders up, look up. Drop the shoulders, look forward. Up, relax, head to one side, cross fiber massage, right across here. I use my other hand to get further behind me and I pull. Pull down, and then the other side. Tilt your head to one side. Yeah. Well, this is just a lovely massage just for you. Taking care of yourself, so important. Good. Okay, ah, feel the neck, neck circles. Now that you warmed it up a little bit, you can do it with your hands down or you can cross the hands, takes the shoulders out of it. Neck circles. Try to keep the head elongated, like you're looking over a fence. Reverse it. Look down. And take your nose and make a smiley face here and here. If you want to watch me do a couple, I just look up. And then my nose comes back down. I make a smiley face the other side. Drawing a smiley face with my nose. My head just relaxed. Dip down. You should feel just a, this is a unique type of stretch right here. Good. Ah, relax. Make some heat. 
while we're working on the body. I'm hot. Came, came into class, I was freezing. Make some heat, press. Take those warm hands, feed the eyes. Uh. Take your index finger and second finger, up bridge of nose, over third eye, out to the temples and just wipe. Same fingers come down, bridge of nose, under cheekbones, keep pressing out to the ears and just, I can't, I've got earphones on, just start at the top of the ears and massage, massage all the way down to the lobes and back. And then after that, take your palms, this is my favorite, and make circles with your palms on your ears. It's okay if you don't hear me. Go one way, go the other way. <sighs> Should feel good. Bring the hands after you're done, right into this posture. Just gonna do a little centering and then finish up. Right under Dantian, one hand over the uh, palm and palm. Feet open and let the bottom hand, always the bottom, just release the bottom hand, let it come up and let it come down through in this karate chop. Notice this is a karate chop formation, straight through my auric field and it's just going through and aligning my chakras. And then palm up, palm on palm, both palms up, it lands. Other hand, release from the bottom, one through. Just a little bit of a different centering to close our practice. This is how we're gonna to close today. Just allowing the body you're using the chi, your chi field hands to wand through your auric field or your etheric field, and it's aligning your chakras, aligning your system. This is one of my favorites. One more to finish it up. Nice and slow, really let it float through right through your auric field. Auric field is anywhere from, gosh, four to 12 inches away. Usually it's different for every person. Let the hand land. And then the hands are like this. And I just want you to turn them in, cross the thumbs. See how they just went like that? Perfect. Thumbs are crossed, palm over palm, over Dantian. Dantian is two inches below navel. And just hold. Breathe into Dantian. Breathe down deep into the belly. I'm gonna show you, you keep your hands on your Dantian, please. I'm just gonna show you inhale, exhale, into the spine and up, inhale. Buddha, exhale, in and a little bit up at the end. If you don't have the up yet, just do the in towards the spine, inhale, exhale, in. Keep your hands on there. I want you to feel the inhale, Buddha belly pushing into your palms. And then exhale as the, as the belly moves away from the palms in towards the spine. Inhale, Buddha, push into the palms. Exhale, let the, be the belly pull away from the palms in towards the spine. One more, inhale. Exhale. Good. Sink all the weight left. Push off and just come back to prayer posture, our original position. Thank you so much for a wonderful class. I hope everyone's feeling better than they did when they got here. I know I did. I did.